Hi, welcome to another in-class activity with our PHP2 class. On activity 8, we're going to do SQL imports using the tool called MySQL Workbench. So there's some instructions on how to import a bulk list of usernames. So if you don't have the uh, MySQL Workbench in installed on your computer, you need to go download it. It's a free tool. So the current version right now is MySQL Workbench 6.3 and you can see it at this URL at the top. So once you get uh, the workbench running, you'll have a login screen here. And I have set up three connections. They're all to the same uh, website. So I'm just going to double click and log in with my default password, root and root. So now you, you actually have to have the web server running. So if we check on our MAMP server, I can see that I have a green uh, message here and green check boxes up here. So it connected successfully because MAMP is running. If we look down through the list of schemas, you can see a list of databases that I've been using in past assignments. So I'm going to create a new one. I think if you right click in the area where it shows schemas, there's a create schema. Let's check on our requirements here. It says we're going to use the uh, in class activity 8 as our schema name, ICA8. So let's go up to here, the schema name, type in IC8, A8, and let's apply it. So the database will be created using that command, and we are done. Okay, we can close that. So we should see ICA8. Okay, I'm going to double click it. And let's see, we've got some tables. We don't have anything right now. So what we need to do is create a model to create some tables. So let's go to File and choose New Model. The uh, schema, let's change the schema right here. So I double click where it says MyDB. I'm going to change that to the schema I just made, so which was ICA8. And we can close this. Let's, uh, let's save our changes before anything happens. So I'll save the model. I pick a folder, and I'm gonna, it doesn't matter where you save it, in your documents is good, or on your desktop. ICA8. Okay, so now let's add a diagram. So double click on the add diagram icon, and we're gonna add a table. So let's see, back to the requirements document it says, we're gonna create a table called customer. It's going to have four different columns in it. They're all capitalized. We have ID, first name, last name, age. This is an integer, a varchar, a varchar, and an integer. Notice the options for uh, what kind of data we're going to have on constraints. Auto increment, non-null, not null, and not null. Okay, so using this information, let's go back to our tool and create this table. So double click on table, and let's call this thing customers. Let's give it the field names. Column names is ID the integer with auto increment. Let's use first name. And let's change him to not null. To be precise, we need to have exactly 50 characters is the length of this field. And let's do last name. Let's do the same requirements here. And then the last was age, which is not an of our char, as an int. And that is also not null. So you can't leave any of those items empty. Okay, so we've got ourselves customers. Let's save the model again. And now let's make the uh, synchronization happen. So there's a couple ways that you can make this design go into your database. Because right now it's just a design on the screen. It doesn't actually exist in the database yet. So if we go to the database menu, there's two menus that can do this. We can choose Forward Engineer, which will take the design and put it into our tables. We can do Synchronize Model. Or the third option is go to Export under the File menu and choose Forward Engineer, your SQL statement. So any one of those three will get you to the result we want. I'm going to choose Database. If I try Forward Engineer, nothing seems to happen. So I think it's a bug in the software for the Macintosh version. It doesn't ever work. So I'm stuck with synchronized model. Let's try that. So I have my username and password and continue. 
I'm not going to skip anything, so I'll continue again. I log in with the word root, make sure it's lowercase, and click OK, and continue. So now let's choose a schema. So it says we're using ICA8. Let's continue, continue. It says here we're going to be creating a table that doesn't exist yet, so let's continue there. Now before you click anything here, let's make sure that the SQL statements look good. So we want to do create a table called customers. It's going to have these items in it. The primary key it looks good to me, so let's choose execute and close. Let's go back to my web browser and I'm going to go look in my map server and see what there is under my tables in here. So I have an ICA8 and there is a customers table and it has the items in it that I just defined. Now the point of this exercise is to do an import of a bulk load of data. So you can see on the menu here we could do an import from here which says uh, we have to have some special formatted pages and then you can upload a file. So the uh, import would work there. However, we're going to use the import that comes with this tool in MySQL Workbench. So let's switch back into our uh, requirements document here. So item number four says create an import data file. So it says use a standard text editor, create a file called customers.csv. And then we're going to create 10 items and it'll have the first name, last name, and age. And we're going to separate these columns with a pipe character. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to go back into a standard old uh, Eclipse. So I'm going to have to create a text file here. So let's go into a folder that I'm working on and let's choose new file. And let's call this thing customers. And the extension is CSV. And let's click finish. So let's see what happens here. It all of a sudden decided to start Microsoft Excel and open up customers.csv. Now the reason why it does that is because my operating system is associating CSV files with a spreadsheet tool. So we could create the columns here and then save it. That would work. Not, not a problem at all. However, we're just going to try to use the uh, the uh, standard um, text editor here. So I've got customers CSV you notice the little green X stands for Excel. I'm going to uh, open this with the text editor. So it just shows up in Eclipse. Now let's see, what are we supposed to create? We're uh, looking for a first name, last name, and age separated by the pipe character. So let's switch back into here and let's create a name. Let's call it uh, Bill Pipe Gates. And let's guess he's probably about 60 years old. And let's continue on with about 10 names. All right, so you can see I've created 10 names here. They have a first name, last name, and age. There is no ID number because in our database, we're going to use that uh, auto increment field. So let's save the work here. So now customer CSV is saved. Let's go back into our tool. I'm going to switch back to the local instance area where it says uh, our items. So I'm, I'm going to look for ICA8 and refresh. Let's see if there's anything under tables. There is a customer's table. So I'm going to open up the, uh, or first of all, I should probably refresh. So I get the latest edition here. And I can open and expand ICA tables and come to customers. So there's the new table. Now let's do a right click on there. And I want to choose the data import. Table data import wizard. Okay, so we need to go open up a file. I'm going to browse for the file, and let's choose uh, htdocs, or wherever you saved yours, and I'm going to find the folder that I put mine in. I think I called it Topic 2, Login Security, and sure enough, there is a customers.csv. Let's choose Open. And so the path name to your folder and file should show up here. Let's click Next. Now it says uh, we're going to choose the table that we're going to import to, so the customer's table. And now it says here, uh, what do you have for column names? So the uh, first name here, Bill, goes with first name, Gates goes with last name, and 60 goes with age. And that looks like we've got it everything. Let's click next, next, and next. Finish. 
So if I want to see the data, I can right click on customers and choose select rows. So it looks like it worked correctly. The ID number was created automatically and the first name, last name, and age were imported according to the uh, wizard that I just went through. So let's switch back into our requirements. Uh, we did the import option here, just as it says. Now number six says validate the data import. So we do right click and choose the uh, select. So let's take a look at our export data options. So number seven, it says we can export using CSV and we can also use JSON data types. So let's go experiment with that. So back into our tool here. Let's go to customers, choose data export wizard. So we're going to select all of the columns, choose next. We have two options here. We can create another CSV file, or the more interesting one would be a JSON file. So if we chose a CSV, we would have line feed as our line separator. You could have strings enclosed to here and the field separator. We can use tabs, semicolons, colons, and so you'd have a different format than what we just used with a pipe character. Let's try the JSON export and let's browse to a file that we're going to save here. So let's call this thing um, export and push save. Try JSON, I said. Let's go to next. And next again. And next. So it says here, this uh, CSV file should have the information in it. So let's go look in our browser here. Let's go to htdocs and find the file that we just created. Login security and export CSV. So I'm curious to know actually what kind of data format this is. So let's choose right click open and Let's pick uh, one of our text editors. So I have uh, Text Wrangler, I have Atom. Uh, let's try Text Wrangler, I know that one works. And so you can see the data format is in JSON format. So this is really the wrong kind of file extension. It should not be CSV. It should be more like uh, JSON. So I'm gonna rename that right now, JSON, and use that extension. Now what happens? If I open this with uh, the same tool, I get a little bit different coloring. If I were to right click and open this with a web browser, let's try this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch to uh, Google Chrome here. Let's see what that might look like. So you can see I have uh, JSON data. So while we're playing around with import and export of data, let's uh, switch back into our web browser and I'm going to the My PHP Admin tool, and let's choose the uh, latest copy of whatever we've got. Open up this file called uh, Customers. Let's take a look at our data. It sure is existing there. Now here's another way to export data. There's an export command in this tool as well. And it's a little different if we were to export this. We can choose lots of different formats. So you can see we can do data formats like JSON, which we did, or CSV, or SQL, which is a very common format. Let's choose that. Let's go. And now we have a complete import-export SQL file. So we could take this and save it as a uh, text document. So I hop, copy everything, and let's put it into maybe a Eclipse again. Make a new file. And so let's name it customers, and let's use the SQL extension here. So finish. All right, so paste it into here, and there is a SQL command. So let's save that. Now let's say you wanted to uh, recreate your database. This one you can see is a SQL command that has the create table, a bunch of inserts, and then it does the uh, customization, such as the primary key. And it allows us to do not null or auto increment, and things like that. So all of that script is written for you. So if you wanted to import this into another database, you would just go to the import command, and you could use this file that we created and browse for it. Or you could click on the SQL 
And instead of uh, having the data there, I could paste in this whole script. And then I would choose Go. And you're going to see all kinds of errors because we already have the database created. It says customers already existed. But if this, if this table weren't there, then everything should come out with a green check mark and be happy. So there's another way to import and export data using uh, PHP MyAdmin. Okay, so now we've got ourselves uh, all the requirements in our document here, and that's a quick demonstration of all the way you can import data and as well export it. So there you have it, number eight.